I know uh, that Saturday, Lake Murray and Columbia are uh, going to have their fireworks thing. Got Josh Wilson, um, Midtown Park in Raleigh, so that's going to be huge. Sunday is a big thing in Simpsonville, South Carolina at Heritage Park. So All the things that I, are happening all over the place. So when you travel, you can catch up to something. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, you know, if you're traveling, visiting family, you can say you can roll into town like you are in the know. Like, <laughs> I know this is where the fireworks are happening. So Scott's in Cary on the 4th of July, right? Can't wait for this. Yeah, big celebration there. And uh, they're going to be having the uh, North Carolina Symphony playing and the Ooh. fireworks going off on uh, Tuesday night. So a lot of fun. We'll be there. I'm going to sit at home in my backyard and just watch the neighbors do whatever they're going to do. Look, let the neighbors <laughs> spend the money on the fireworks. Right? <laughs> we used to be those neighbors, but not so much anymore. I could see that with the Riles. Yeah, we used doing to. that, you know? Oh, my goodness. Shoot off tons of fireworks um, in the cul-de-sac where we used to live in that neighborhood. And now that we live out in the country, we do a few, but we don't do like we used to do. <laughs> we did sparklers and just run around right. the front yard. <laughs> like, That's about wee! it for the Dempseys. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sure would love to hear about your 4th of July coming up. 800-447-7234. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. It's Rob and Liz in the morning. Okay, Brenda is here. What are you doing for the 4th? Oh, I'm going to the Pentacana, Dominican Republic. For real? Oh, that sounds like it's gorgeous. What's going to bring you there? We, my husband and I go um, almost every year, our getaway. What do you love most about Punta Cana? The beaches are beautiful. The people are friendly. How did this become a tradition for you? We got married a little over three years ago, and we started thinking about our vacation together. And we just picked Dominican, and we've been going ever since. Girl, I know you're going to shoot off some fireworks when you're in Punta Cana. Yes, they don't celebrate, so... We, I kind of try to do my little thing with the, you know, the flag and dressed in red, white, and blue. Well, there you go. Maybe some sparklers. Oh, Run around yeah. with sparklers. That would be so good, Brenda. <laughs> Thank you for that. Roy texted and said, here's what I'm doing. I'm a combat veteran dealing with PTSD. So what I'm going to do is watch the National 4th Special on television. But Roy's going to turn the volume down on TV and turn up his radio. So thank you, Twofold. Thank you for your service. And thank you for turning up his radio. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Sadly, Paul's wife, who they've been married for like eons, passed away. And here he is. Doesn't seem like family's around, and he's all by himself. Yeah, and so Shireen and Wilson, their family moves into Paul's neighborhood, and like the first day they're there, he comes over, and he's offering to let them borrow a ladder because I guess he's, you know, he's probably sitting on his front porch watching things happen, and looks like they need a ladder, so he goes over there. They loved this guy. Like, they just started a relationship just about from day one. It's amazing to see this. It, so much so that he started coming over for, like, family meals every now and then. I think now it's a weekly thing. He is honorary papa now. Yeah. He's their grandpa he all is. of a sudden. Yeah, they even have family portraits, and he's in some of them, which is super cool. It is so beautiful. There was a couple that my wife and I were friends with. Uh, um, it was um, Mike, Mark and Amy Taylor. And they had a gentleman that was at their church, lived at the apartments just up the road from them, and he was honorary grandpa. I love it's this. It's so great when people do that. It, it really is when you open your home and your hearts, you know, or if somebody, if you're on the receiving end of that, maybe you've moved to, uh, and this happened to me, I moved to a new state, didn't have any family around. And so several different people that uh, worked at the daycare where my daughter went adopted us and treated her like their grandchild. That's wonderful. Like, you know, bought her little outfits and took her on little play dates. Listen, you live in a day and age when the kids grow up, they flight. You know, yeah. for the most part, it's not sticking around as a big family unit like back in the day, eons and generations ago. My heart is broken. I know, right? I don't want that day to happen. I, I, I don't either, but I've got a son who's in Florida. Thankfully, the rest are around here. I've got one in the house that's in high school. They're not going anywhere real soon. Yeah. But, you know, but now we moved here 23 years ago away from any family whatsoever. And so I let me tell you. It was hard not having a grandpa or grandpa unless you drove 
800 miles to go see. Yeah, and you need that support system. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you may not be blood-related, um, but you become family, and it's so important to have that in your yeah, life. Yeah, and I don't know if you have that in your life, but it'd be really cool to hear if you do. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. Oh, those special relationships with the grandparents. you got to love it, especially as you're doing all this traveling during the summer. It's Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. Yeah, Kirk texted and said to the military, you know, they're always moving uh, to where there is no family support. So they don't have that, like, blood relationship, grandparents or parents. So that's one reason that the military often becomes family with each other. That's good. Because they have to support each other. Um, Serena texted and said, I live in my grandparents' house. We live next door to my aunt and uncle, who are next door to my parents, huh. who are next door to another aunt and uncle. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great neighborhood. I know. She said, I love it. I would not have it any other way. They help to raise her babies. Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> right? <laughs> With the in-laws right across the street. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, here is Aaron at 800-447-7234. This is going to sound a little funny, but my grandma and I kind of had a rocky relationship, me growing up. And I know that most people don't have a bad relationship with their grandma. But we, now that she lives with me, I've been trying to be more intentional about helping her and not turning my shoulder to her just because of past grudges and actually taking care of her and loving her. I love that you're working on that. That's so important to you. It's it's very obvious it is. It's been tough, but, you know, I really think this will help me and help her and even my parents, too, that they can find peace in it all. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. I don't know if you've ever had a perk on a flight, flying somewhere, because there's going to be a lot of traveling coming up this weekend. Millions and millions and millions, according to AAA, are going to be on the road and in the air. It's Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio, like, upgraded to, for, like, first class or something like that. There was one guy that got quite the upgrade. Not only was he able to sit in first class, the dude was the only person on the plane outside of the flight staff. They didn't call a plane just for him. He'd actually been waiting on his flight. Was that you know all these delays have been happening? Oh my god. It's been crazy with it. And if you've had to fly, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've seen the post all over the place. But this guy's been waiting for 18 hours. Everybody else gave up. He stayed and he was on the plane and the whole air staff had to come from their hotels to fly just one guy. To wherever the destination was. Yeah, the pilot, co-pilot, the stewards. I mean, they were there. So he spent part of the time, at least, you know, in his videos that he's posted, like in first class. And then he kind of went back to the back. And then, But he was hanging out. He is part of a group chat now with the crew. Isn't that cool? Because <laughs> they got to know each other. And I can't remember where he was flying from, but he was flying into Charlotte. And so it was, uh, you know, maybe a couple of hour flight, and they got to know each other. If yeah, you're the, they got real close. I wonder if he got both the peanuts and the pretzels. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So Wheel of Fortune, Pat Sajak. You probably heard the news by now that he's gone next year. He's retiring after the 24th season. That's a long run. 41. Oh, 40. I said 24. Yeah. 41st season. That is amazing. And then Ryan Seacrest, you probably already know, is stepping into the seat. And he's going to be doing Wheel of Fortune. I, I just, I honestly think he just sits back and goes, oh, I want that job. Oh, I want that job. I want that job. He probably can call if he wants that. Doesn't need to probably send in a could. resume. And it could be that some people go, you know who would be great for this? Ryan Seacrest. Let's just give it a shot and ask. I would never thank Ryan Seacrest for Wheel of Fortune. Really? I Talk shows, maybe some other game shows. I don't, like, I don't see him on Jeopardy. I don't see him on Wheel of Fortune. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess like more of a music thing. And there one called Shazam or something like that. Jamie Foxx hosts it. Oh, um, I'm not even interested yeah. in that. Yeah. So, but I think Ryan Seacrest oh, could do that type. this is an iconic type. show. Right. And so that's why they have him doing just, it. Ryan Seacrest stepping into the seat. To me, He may weird. surprise you. He might, but he, it he just may seems, surprise you. Seems weird. I tell you, Scott has a dream of hosting like a game show. Which Ooh. one? Pri the Price is Right, the and I'm old right. school Price is Right, like dun, Bob Barker dun. days. So either the host or the, you know, like the uh, announcer calling people, come on down, oh, something like yeah. that. What was that guy's name? Johnny something. I can't remember. Johnny Olson was there the original. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, this is going way back. And yeah. then he passed away. Yeah. But Drew Carey's been doing it for how many years now? Yeah, Drew's been 20 years? A long time now. Really? Long. That long? 20? And, and Bob Barker. Ten. 
The O oh, is it ten? Okay, about ten years, I think. Yeah. That that guy still kicking. He's still out there. Like wow, that's who I watched when I was a little little girl, mm-hmm. and then it went to Drew Carey. But yeah, mm. Price is Right. I can see Scott Scooter Scooter on Price is Right. I like it. She calls Back him in the day, Scooter, just so you know. <laughs> Back in the day, eight, you know, watching Bob Barker, he was like so suave. I was like, yeah, I, I could, I'd like to do that. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Grand Trinity. It's a thing. Grand Trinity. Yet like paternity or maternity, now there's Grand Trinity that some businesses are honoring for grandparents that are having grandkids. Yeah, I love this. I love this. So you can get either a day um, off for, you know, to welcome in the baby or up to a couple of weeks. Because I know when my daughter gave birth to the twins, we had talked back and forth about how she's going to need some extra help and this kind of thing. So that's what this is for. If you can help that transition, the new baby thing. So... How did you guys handle that? Because it sounded like you balanced it pretty well. So I would leave work and go help. And, you know, we took um, the two-year-old, Jacinio. we would take her for a couple of days. And then the other grandparents did kind of the same thing. And so it was a huge family affair to help I remember that. Because one of the babies, you know, they had twins. And so one of the babies, Juliet, had to go back in the hospital. And so there was a lot of pitching in from both sides. To try to get wow. through that. So Grand Turnity would have come in handy. Y'all. Right? But, I'm know, telling you. But, but not a lot of people are, but it seems like more businesses are doing this grand, grander. Grand Turnity. Grand Turnity. It's, it's a hard word. I feel like we need to come up with a different word. Right? But, but there's four or five. I think it's like a handful of businesses in the country that are doing it. But if it works out, um, then it, it can continue. And they're doing it because they want to hold on to the older employees, which I think is, you know, the more benefits that you have and the more flexible it can be, the longer you're going to keep somebody around. Yeah, that's true. As long as they don't take advantage of it. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Don't go to bed with wet hair. No. Just want to let you know, there's a little professional hack for you. (laughs) I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I go to bed with my hair wet, so when I wake up in the morning, it's super curly. So I just read that if your hair is wet and you go to bed, that is a human environment for your hair, and then that will be susceptible to the growth of yeast in your scalp. Ew. That's gross. I know. That really is gross. I I wait to wash my hair in the morning. I I don't wash my hair before I go to bed. My hair is so thick that it takes hours like sometimes if i go to bed with it wet i will wake up and it's still wet up underneath i can see that yeah she does have a full head of hair yeah so i i have to like i'm not taking a shower first thing in the morning i'm but, sorry i take but a there's shower some micro boomiums yeah there's, i don't even know how to say the word there's some junk growing in your head evidently <laughs> if you go to a bed with your uh hair wet so and sometimes I even put it up in a bun so it's super curly, like I put the product in it. So then I don't even know what's in there having a party. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> hey, Mr. Mold, hey, Mrs. Mold. <laughs> wow. Wow, she's got uh, dandruff. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Scott's along with us this morning at 800-447-7234. What's up, Scott? I was just listening to y'all talk about playing with big tractors and toys and stuff. Like, that statement has never been so true. So I own a Grayton company, and I get so excited. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I'm so excited about getting on the tractor this morning. I woke up at 3.30 in the morning ready to go to work. (laughs) Because I'm so excited about running a tractor all day today. That is awesome. So what are you going to be working on? Oh, yeah. So I'm working back filling a house up on Lake Kiwi. I own a grading business, and I literally, I get on a tractor every day of the week. Well, naturally not on the weekend. Monday through Friday, I'm on a tractor every day, and I get so excited, I literally cannot sleep at night. <laughs> Living a dream. Sleep, oh, yeah, like where can you get paid good money to go play all day long? It'd be like a woman getting paid to go shopping all day. Yes, yes, you understand women. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Eric's along with us this morning. Good to hear you, Eric. 800-447-7234. What's going on? Y'all was talking about uh, fireworks. We just opened up our fire stand, our fireworks stand. What is the go-to firework thing that we should buy? Ghost Recon. 
What is that? It is an aerial, what we call a cake. You light it once, and it's got multiple in it, and it shoots off. We have one that's called Enough Said, and it's a cake, too. But it will set, it literally says on it, will set off car alarms. <gasps> no. Wow. That's yeah. the one to set and off in the uh, neighborhood, huh? <laughs> All the yeah. neighbors will be coming yeah. out of their house. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. It's very possible you heard that now you might be able to really get your hands on what your kids are seeing. And so you'll be able to do some kind of parental control with all that with Facebook and Instagram. There's all this stuff. But Scott was telling us about this really interesting service he uses. Yeah, it's called Bark. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's on a phone. Our teenage daughter has it. You can kind of monitor uh, content, filter sites, and manage screen time. So a different, a lot of different features that parents can have to kind of keep an eye on things. So it's really, really locked down. How yeah. do you how do you use it? Well, you have a parent account, and the our daughter has you know the child account. It's through an app, and you download it on both phones. And the parents can go in and kind of keep an eye on what you know your child but I'm is asking, looking at. I'm asking, how do you use it? Oh, how do I use it? Yeah, I just kind of. Like, Open the app and well, do you spot check, we, or do you, you know, check in every day? Well, we open it up and we can set limits, and then that way, you know, it the app actually works on its own. So, so how long how the, long have you had it so far? About a year. A year. So. Okay. So when yeah. you first initially set it up, what were the <laughs> limits you actually set? Well, we do a lot of the time limits. So my daughter, you know, she can get on. Facebook, Instagram, some of the sites, but she can't stay on there more than maybe 30 minutes. And we also like to do the nighttime thing. So after a certain time, you know, at night, mm -hmm. it's completely blocked and she can't even get on there at all. See, I do that with Eli. Now, I don't have Bark, but I do, but he has an iPhone. So there's parental controls on the iPhone. So there's downtime. So I limit the things that he can do in the evening. Like he can only FaceTime family. You yeah. can only contact family, and the Life 365 is up. Oh, those are great controls. Yeah. Uh, I used to, because I don't remember a lot of the parental controls when my kids were younger, so I just did the the mom spot check. Okay, it's time to hand me your phone. Oh, they never knew when it was coming. Let me tell you, I have every password. Absolutely. Every single password so that I can we go in too. and look. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Because yeah. you're the parent, and the parent's yeah. allowed to have that because, listen— you know, kids, as well-natured as they are, there there's a tendency to kind of fib a little bit. No. I did. I mean, I come on. Well, in my house, they know the rule. And I would hear, um, I need some privacy. Well, when you start making your mortgage payment, that's when your <laughs> privacy kicks in.